This is a lucky spinster, Fran Burney, 26. Until four weeks ago, her world was bounded on the north by a nine to five job, on the south by a 12 by 14 single room, on the east by unmarried panic, on the west by quiet desperation. Then she made a telephone call and met a man. Great to see you, Fran. I got here one drink ago and I already ordered, okay? Oh, yes, yes, fine, oh, good. How, how did your day go? Oh, great, great, just great. You remember that stock I told your buddy of mine tipped me off on? Yeah. Up, up, up like a rocket almost into orbit. <laughs> <laughs> Another killing like today and you can start picking out that split level with the built-in kitchen. <laughs> oh, uh, waiter, bring the food, will you please? Well, drink up, honey, drink up. We've got reason to celebrate. Is, is it all right if I tell Myra? I, I, I mean, that, that, that we're just practically ready to set the date. Oh, I don't think you should, honey. Really, I don't. Girlfriends are funny. To your face, they, they seem glad enough, but sometimes behind your back, they spread gossip. You know what I mean? Myra would be very happy for me. Honey, the best thing Myra ever did for you was to get you to join Mildred's escort service. Let's leave it at that, huh? That's an order, baby. Um, Al, uh, you you don't think any the less of me, do you? Because because we met on a paid for date. Are you kidding? Oh, here we are. All right, now, baby, I want you to eat every bite of this. I can't have people saying that my future wife is skinny. <laughs> Al. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. I just told Sylvia, your feet are tired, let's go in here. Oh, Matt, so this is the lovely little wife you were keeping in hiding. How's that new baby? That was a sweet note you sent us thanking us for that carriage. Sylvia, I want you to be Mr. and Mrs. Horner here. And the couple I was telling you about that finally had a baby. See, it's never too late. Like Al says, you gotta keep on trying. Huh? Well, I'm very happy to have met you, Mrs. Horner, and congratulations. Oh, friend, listen, friend. Uh, Max, it's just a little family argument. Frank, listen. Frank. Listen, listen to me. Listen. Now, that, 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 that guy Max had it all mixed up. He's got me mixed up with some other guy, Fran. All right, so I stretched the truth a little bit. There's other guys who do things like that, too. You had fun, didn't you? You used me! You used me! All right, all right, go ahead, slap me. I'm a monster. All right, so I'm a married man, I took you out. That's a terrible thing to do, isn't it? All right, let me call a cab. Man, I'm sorry, I... There's drinks. Try and help me.
Get the resident on emergency. Get a couple of nurses out here. All right, all right. Don't move him. Keep him quiet. Really? Really? Really, you're no good. Give me my money, sweat, huh? You give me my money, sweat. Really? That's fine. You pull that knife out, he hemorrhages right here. Get him up on that stretch. What are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna sew his heart up. I want to keep the knife in place. Then set up a purse string suture around it and draw it tight simultaneously with removing the knife. My main concern is shock. I want to use plasma instead of whole blood. Who are you? Detective Flint, 65th Precinct. It's Detective Arcaro. Frank, you better call Mike. Yeah. Just tell me you know the man who was stabbed, that you were talking to him. Friend of my husband's. Would you be kind enough to give me his name and address? Well, answer the man. Well, his name was Al Horner. Al Horner? Horner, yeah. We were together, the friendly Russian. You know the place. Practically new cars. What was his address? Well, you know, as you know, guy, you don't necessarily go to his house, you know. Well, they never invite us to their house. We don't know where they live. Of course, the boss could know. Oh, the friendly Russian. His name is Sam Garvey. The friendly Russian. Well, he bought it from the original. But give the detective a card. Policemen also buy cars. How about the woman who stabbed him? Do you know her? Well, I wouldn't exactly say we knew Well, if you're speaking about acquaintance, uh, no, we didn't know her. But who she is, well, she's his wife. His wife? Yeah. Well, we were talking about the baby, the new baby. Yeah. Are you sure about this? Well, it should be his wife. Some wife and mother, that Mrs. Horner, isn't she, huh? Would you wait a minute? I'll be right back. Operator, this is Detective Lieutenant Mike Parker of the 65th Squad, shield number 203. Could you find out if there's a listing for Al Horner? Yeah, Horner. H-O-R-N-E-R. -E you know, if you had any sense, this would be a lesson to you? What do you mean? Don't push me beyond my limits, either. What's that number again, operator? Thanks. Yeah, Mike. How's Horner doing? Well, he's still alive, but nobody here is willing to say for how long. Look, Adam, I got the information on who stabbed him. It happens to be his wife. His wife? Wait a minute, Mike. Is her name Millie? What does that add up to? Well, he was kind of delirious, but he mumbled a few things, and I wrote them down. Just a minute. Yeah, he said, uh... Millie, Millie, you no good. Give me my money's worth, huh? You gave me my money's worth, Millie. You can find that out when you pick her up. Here's the information I got when I called the house. 
She left her baby with an aunt, and she went downtown to do some shopping. She came back, looked in on the kid, and she went out for some groceries. Well, that doesn't necessarily sound like a person who just stabbed somebody. Who can tell what Shark is going to do? Remember that woman on 61st Street knocked her husband off? When we walked in, she was baking a cake. Yeah. Well, take down the address, go down to the apartment. Check in, see what you can get, okay? Just a minute. Mrs. Al Horner, come to the check stand, please. What number is this? Uh, three. Mrs. Al Horner, kindly come to check stand number three, please. You, Mrs. Horner? Mrs. Al Horner. Oh, what's the matter? Something's the matter with my baby? We're police officers, Mrs. Horner. May we talk to you, Mom? What's wrong? Is something the matter with my baby? Well, your baby is fine. Just want to ask you a couple of questions. Where were you from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock this afternoon? Oh, I went downtown to get some things in a department store. Did you have lunch with your husband at the cabin restaurant? No, he was working. Why are you asking me these questions? Well, I hate to have to tell you this, Mrs. Horner, but your husband had an accident. He's dead. No, no, he's not dead, Mrs. Horner. He's in the hospital. Your husband was stabbed. Stabbed? A woman stabbed him. Oh, he was working. How could she stab him? He was with a woman? I have to get some uh, baby food. Mrs. Horner, I'll take it to your husband. Detective Arcaro here can take the food home to the baby. Oh, yeah. All right. to her. you go out with? Oh, who did I go out with? Don't you even know that? I take care of a hundred clients. Do you think I can remember every one of them? I went out with Al Horner. Well, he told me he was single. What do you want? Your money back? We got a no money back policy. I just thought you'd like to know, to protect somebody else. I, I thought maybe you should tell his wife so that she'd know. Listen, you. What are you trying to do? Make trouble. My hands are covered with blood because you lied to me! What did you do? I killed him! What, 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 what do you think I am? Some kind of cheap woman, some... What do you think I am? What are you coming to me for? Are the police following you? The police? Police, yes! I don't know. I, I, I just thought you ought to know what you did. I just wanted to talk to somebody. I tried to call Myra and she, she's not at home. Now she's listen, away. you. I'm going to give you a break. You get out of here. And I won't tell anybody that you came to see me. But you get out of here. And you don't mention me. And you don't mention the escort service. Where should I go? Just get out of town. Get on a train. Get on a bus. Go away. I don't have anybody to go to. Don't you realize what I stand to lose in this? I got my license taken away. Who are you? Did I come to you or did you come to me? Did I ask you to go out with Horner? Or did you come to me and tell me how lonely you were? I did you a favor. And look what's happening to me because of it. I want you to go away. And I want you to protect me. Here, take this money and keep quiet about me. What do you think I am? Do you, th do you think I came here to blackmail you? 
Anyone can use a little money. When you're in trouble, it's useful. I came here to talk. I wanted to ask for advice. I wanted to ask for help. I don't want anything from you. Just take the money. Don't insult me. Don't insult me like that. If I ever find that you told anyone that Bernie was here today, I'll shred you into small ribbons. That who was here? Now get Frankie. Tell him to get over here immediately. great believer in astrology or th things of superstition, but I, I read in the newspaper astrology column this morning that, that this must be a singularly wonderful day for me. Singularly. That was the exact word that was used. You, uh, are you talking to me? Not, not exactly, but not, not. I wonder, could, could you lend me a dime so I could call a girlfriend of mine? I got a quarter. I lost my purse. <laughs> I, I only need a dime. And I thank you. Miss, Miss. Please don't, don't talk to me any more than you have to. Not, not for my, my sake, but for yours. I'm not a nice person. He's still alive. Where does the guy begin? When a married man goes out with a woman who isn't his wife, he doesn't tell anybody who she is. So his boss can't tell us who Millie is, his fellow employees can't tell us who Millie is, and it's a cinch his wife can't tell us who Millie is. You're making it look like it's my fault. That's not your fault. Why aren't you yelling at his wife or his fellow employees instead of yelling at me? Because you're the closest one to me, Mike. One thing I gotta say about Adam, he's always logical. Well, it just so happens that I know who Millie is. What? What? You didn't ask me, so I didn't tell you. But I got an idea. What do you say we all go down to the police lab? Maybe we might find out something. Hi, Brace. Why should I be the only one who's frustrated? Now, I want you to tell them everything that you told me, point by point, from the top. Now, I received the victim's effect from the hospital. And I put the victim's clothes through the standard tests. And I am pleased to report that he spent time in close proximity to machinery and or automobiles. For example, he sells used cars. Possibly. Yes. I uh, went through his wallet, which contains the usual identification and a collection of credit cards. Then I took the liberty 
of calling this restaurant in the hope that I could get hold of a glass or a dish that the young lady had, had handled. I'm pleased to report that all the utensils on that table were picked up and steam cleaned. It's a very sanitary place. In other words, you got nothing. Fraser, we could have saved you the trouble. We, uh, we also went through the wallet before we sent it to you. But uh, who's Millie? Ah, remember, in my work, nothing is sometimes progress. Therefore, I went through the wallet again, and this time, I looked down in the inner lining. Yes. What you're looking for is right there now. Acting on the lieutenant's instructions, I put it back. Where? Where's the inner lining? You have to go down inside this thing and around the other thing and pull out that piece of cloth, and there you are. Mildred's escort service. When you went to the police academy, weren't you taught to be observant? You boys are in quite a hurry now, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you for your observance. Anytime. <laughs> Yes? I'd like to see Mildred, please. Well, now, are you registered? We don't just take anyone, you know. Mildred worries about her clients. She's very fussy. Would you like to fill out a card? Two such nice gentlemen. Mildred. You've got policemen. What do they want? Let me have that. This is Detective Flint, 65th Precinct. I want to ask you some questions. Sure, I'll answer questions. You just come right on in. And if you've got any idea in mind of a shakedown, you think twice. Because when I talk, I talk in front of witnesses. A mother's heart is behind it all, huh? That door over there. Thanks. First of all, you got a warrant. You got a charge. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Now, let me tell you two something. I got friends. And if I don't like your questions, you're going to hear from my friends. You want to ask questions? Here's my identification. Maybe you want to press charges after we leave. It's mine. I can be just as polite as you. On the wall over there is my license. I'm a legitimate business. That's about me. Now, anything you want to know about my clients is privileged and confidential. And locked in a mother's heart. So ask questions, and if I feel like it, I'll answer. Well, you'll either answer them here, or you're going to be brought down to the precinct and talk to the lieutenant. I don't have to talk to no lieutenant in no place. You start moving me around, and I'll wrap you up in a charge of false arrest so fast. Lady, lady. Look, why don't you just listen to the question before you get so excited? You don't even know what we're going to ask you yet. This afternoon, a man was stabbed, a man named Al Horner. We don't know if he's going to live or die. I don't know Al Horner. Lady, you lie like breathing. He's a client of yours. I can make you prove that in court. That won't be too difficult. What do you want? I want the name of the girl he had a date with last night. <laughs> what makes you think I keep records like that? I introduced my clients once. After that, they're on their own. I also want a list of all the girls you got him dates with. You're asking me to betray a sacred trust. <whistles> You're asking me for the names of nice girls who you want to drag into the dirt. Now, lady, get off of your high horse, will you? Who do you think you're talking to? A couple of morons? You know about my patrons or clients. Little secretaries who live like mice, all by themselves. Nobody would get asked for a date if they lived for 2,000 years. Mildred makes dates for them. <laughs> Mildred makes it possible for them to look in the mirror and say to themselves, I had a date with a man, too. You're off the subject. So sue me. I want the complete record on Al Horner, and I want it now. Otherwise, Detective Akara is going to stay here while I go get a warrant. I'm going to come back and take it whether you want to give it up or not. <sighs> Al Horner's a louse. If he got stabbed, he deserves it. 
Go get them what they want. What do you want me to do? Take the little secretary mice by the hand, give them a lecture in five minutes that their mother should have given them a... Cream and sugar milk tea. Anything else? So? Miss? Where were you this afternoon between 12 and 2 o'clock? Give me my time card! I come on here at 11, I go off at 11. It's a long day, isn't it? Now, how do I know somebody else didn't check you in? Did you hear the man's question? Is he kidding? Miss, you're registered with uh, Mildred's escort service, aren't you? So? Well, here's a list of name of the girl that went out with uh, Al Horner. So that's what my name's doing here. Any of those names mean anything to you? Donna Spooner, Lucille McNamies? McNamies. Fran Bernie. Nope. Why? Al Horner was stabbed. Somebody on the list? We think so. Is he dead? It's close to it. I went out with Horner once, never again. That's the kind of guy he was. Want me to spell it out? On that whole list, there's not one pretty girl. Wait a minute. I thought you said you didn't know any of these names. Who has to know the names? Think a girl with looks would register at Mildred's? Look at me. Never mind. You know what every girl on that list wants? Please, God, if somebody's going to call them a dog, don't let it be said where they can hear. You never heard that before? That's the spinster's prayer. What's the matter? I embarrass you?
we do everything in the best of taste here. You'll meet a gentleman here just as you would in your own mother's home. I make all introductions personally. It's going to take $50 to register. Oh, yes. Um, my friend Myra, Myra Edwards, is registered with you. Very fond of Myra. And she said that it isn't necessary to make the whole payment all at once. Payments can be arranged. One third down now and sixteen sixty-seven a month for the next two months. Is that satisfactory? Is that satisfactory? I'll need two photographs of you for my client's book. Uh, not the positives. I'll want the negatives so we can touch them up a little bit. Oh, is that necessary? I mean, if, if a man sees your picture and then he meets you and he sees that you're different, doesn't he feel cheated? I mean, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be so embarrassed. My dear young woman, are you embarrassed when you wear lipstick? Do you think you look the same without lipstick as with it? somebody or I'll go out of my mind. I, I've been trying all night to get my girlfriend on the telephone and she's not at home and that's my last 10 cents too. If your coin was not returned, please send us a postcard with your name and address and we will forward you the proper amount in United States postage stamps. No, 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 no it wasn't, it, not a complaint. I, I, I just wanted to hear the sound of a human voice. I'll be glad to help you, madam, but I'm not allowed to engage in social conversation. I'm, I'm sitting here in a phone booth in a, in a big, empty building. I'm sorry, madam. I don't understand the nature of your complaint. I have no one to talk to. My, my best girlfriend isn't at home. Madam, if you want the telephone number of the YWCA, please call information. You took my money. There's been no change, so I'm not here to give you any bad news. I don't want you to get the idea that I'm chasing you, but it's not good for you to be here. It's not good for you. It's against hospital regulations, but that's not what bothers me. It's really not good for you. No, I want to be here when he regains consciousness. I want to tell him right away that I don't want any apologies. I don't want any explanations. I don't even want to talk about it ever again. Mrs. Horner, please. I want you to go home. I want you to take a nice warm bath. I want you to get into bed and go to sleep. If there's any change in your husband's condition, I'll, I'll call you immediately, personally. All right. I'll help you find a taxi. Mike, this is Mrs. Lowe, the landlady. Mrs. Lowe, this is Lieutenant Parker. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Lowe? We're looking for a picture of the girl or anything else that might turn up. Now, Mrs. Lowe, I'd like for you to tell the lieutenant here what you told us about the way Miss Bernie came home. You want me to start where I started with you? Uh, no, uh, actually, see, she just gave us a character sketch of a kind of shy type woman. A little sad, you know. Uh, now, uh, if you would just start from last night. Well, it was about 2.30 in the morning. 
I was lying in bed. My room is directly under Myra Edwards' room. Mrs. Lowe, who is this Myra Edwards? Oh, that's uh, the Bernie girl's best friend, probably her only close friend. I heard this tapping on Myra's door and a soft little voice saying, Myra, Myra, you know, like in a dream, there's a voice outside your window asking to please come in. And when you got up there, there was the Bernie girl? But she never comes home at this hour. This was the first time in five years in my house. But she wasn't drunk. She was very disturbed. I said, what is it? And she said, I can't find Myra. Now, Myra's out all the time, almost every night. So why she should be so disturbed about that, I don't know. I said, can I help? And she said, I've lost my purse. And I said, oh, did you lose a lot of money? And she said, it's not the money, Mrs. Lowe. I don't have my key. And I said, why, you foolish girl, you're entitled to wake me up one night in five years. And she said, I've done enough wrong in one day. I can never make it up as long as I live. I can't make it up to the dead, and I can't make it up to the living. She was on the verge of tears. So I let her into the room, and I went downstairs. I started to get into bed, and I decided... It might be a cup of tea would be nice for, and a little conversation. So I made the tea, and I went back up with it. And when I got there, she was gone. Oh, phone's been ringing like crazy all day yesterday and since early this morning. Do you think that could have been the Bernie girl calling her? How would I know that? Are um, any of these pictures of her? We'd like one that, that looks as close to her as she might look now. This one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Lowe. I want a stakeout put around the house. I want all the calls intercepted to the girlfriend's phone. And I want an all points put on on the woman herself. That's right. the beginning, anyway. Don't go. Come in. I like you. I'm sorry. I didn't want to get you up. Oh, it's all right. Take off your coat. How about some coffee? Yeah. Good, thanks. Right. Oh, I had the greatest dream last night. I dreamt I invented a new kind of sink. What? Yeah. Three faucets. Hot, cold, and morning coffee. There you go. What's the matter with the coffee? No, no, coffee's fine. I'm just thinking about this case that I'm working on. Ah, oh, stop. It's too early to think. Oh, I just thought of something. Huh? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Honey, would you get mixed up with a married man? What? Would you uh, become involved with a married man? Sure. You would? Mm-hmm. If you were married to me. <laughs> Any sleep? No, I... I spent the night looking for a girl. Oh, did you find her? No. Find out who she was, but... I didn't find her. Well, what'd she do? She stabbed a guy. She just pick up a knife and stab him? No, she didn't just pick up a knife and stab him. It's never that simple. She may have been pushed into him when she was holding the knife. And then again, maybe she wasn't. There's a lot of conflicting stories. There always are. She's uh, walking around the streets of New York right now. She doesn't know anybody. She has no place to go as far as we can tell. Mm.
It's Fran Burney, Mrs. Horner. Who? Who is it? You don't know me, Mrs. Horner. Please open the door. I, I, I didn't want to ring the bell because I was afraid it, it might wake the baby. You going to be a summons now? My husband's in the hospital with his heart wounded. No, 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 this isn't a summons. It, it, please, Mrs. Horner, it, it's money. I, I, I want you to take it, please. Money for what? It, 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 it's conscience money. Don't, don't you understand? I'm the woman. I'm, I'm that woman who was in the restaurant with him. Honey, I knew something was wrong. Yeah, what? Yeah. Uh, this is Detective Flint. Let me speak with Lieutenant Parker. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, Adam. Listen, you remember that when the landlady said she left the Bernie woman in her apartment because she didn't have a key, she didn't have a purse? Well, of course, that means she had no money. But now, do you think she had enough money in her house to, uh, to buy a plane ticket or a train ticket to go somewhere? We got the airports and terminals covered. You heard me put out the all points. Um. Well, look, what about the bank account? What bank account? Well, I don't know. She's, uh, like all the other secretaries in New York, she must have a bank account. And, Mike, if she has a bank account, I'll bet she's going to be at that bank today trying to get her money out. I think we'd better find out where the bank is. We haven't anything better to go on. I'll start checking it out here. Good. I'll be right down. I'm sorry, baby. I won't be able to finish the coffee. What else? I expected it. One thing about being a policeman's girl, I always have the most interesting mornings. <laughs> well, now you can get some more sleep. Thank you. He swore to me that he wasn't married. All I wanted was a little companionship. I've got a right. You ought to forgive me for interfering with your private life, for loving my own husband, for taking him away from you once in a while, for having his baby. You could have forgiven me. You gotta forgive me! You gotta forgive me! She took her money out of the bank, didn't we? She yeah. said she was going to give it to somebody who did her a great wrong. Yeah. Well, she didn't give it to Horner at the hospital, therefore, who else is left? Look, I'm just saying take it easy. She could have mailed the money just as easy as not. Okay, Fran, but while we're talking about it, we can find yeah, out. Yeah, well, let's not run about it. That's all I'm saying. Hey. Frank, go back to the car and call the fire department. I'm going to go up there and see what I can do. Yeah. Bernie, aren't you? Who are you? I'm Adam Flint. I'm a detective. Miss Bernie, you think you killed Al Horner, but you didn't. He's still alive. He's going to recover. Now, that's the truth. I don't think that's got anything to do with the case. Please don't come any closer. Please let me think. Okay. Can I sit down here? Right here. Uh, 
<laughs> You're gonna try that, that trick of offering me a cigarette like they do in the movies. Thought maybe you'd like to have a smoke. Sorry. Fresh out. It's the way it is. Fresh out. It's the story of my life. Did you call the fire department? Put out the nets? Yes. Why? To save your life. Why? So you can arrest me? So I can have my picture in all the newspapers? Look, Miss Bernie, you got mixed up in an accident. I was born. That was my accident. Al Horn is gonna live. Now, I'm positive of that. I talked to the doctor and I talked to him. He's worried about you. Did you talk to his wife? Go away, leave me in peace. A person is entitled to a little peace once in her life. There's no peace down there. You know what's the... You know what's the biggest crime of all, Mr. Detective? Not robbery. Not even murder. It's the waste of people. Not being used. Drying up and blowing away. My mother used to say, when God sweeps out his house, it's people like me he sweeps under the rug. It's his broom. A life under the rug. So let's tell the truth. Even you don't care about me as a person. I'm just part of your job, that's all. If I jump, it's just a black mark on your record. An hour later, you'll, you'll arrest a pickpocket. Well, arrest me, Mr. Detective, because I got caught with my, with my hand in somebody's pocket. I stole another woman's husband. You see, Mr. Detective, the wind loves me. The earth wants me to come to it. The earth wants to kiss me. This woman. Life loves you. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.